Hey, Rila, could you pick up that phone? What? Because I friggin' called it! Oh, yeah. This week is... Yeah, ridiculous? I mean, we kinda did this to ourselves. We were practically poking fate with a stick. I was exhausted just putting this list together, man! Well, let's get this over with. Yeah... Hi, hi, everyone! Hey... We've got a full show for you this week. Hope you guys are ready to tune in, cause we sure as hell aren't. Riley... Pray for us, guys. Such a drama queen. For my first decree, you'll just get on with it. Oh, brother. <sighs> I'm Rila. I'm Riley. And, and you're, you're watching, watching Bulletin, Bulletin Weekly. Bulletin Weekly. Last week came with a ton of trailers. Wonder Woman got a new one. I'm still on the fence, honestly. It was just as visually impressive as the last one, but no real surprises. Pixar's upcoming movie, Coco, also got its first trailer. It didn't really tell much about the movie's plot or anything, but it introduced us to the world and it was beautiful. Unfortunately... <sighs> yeah. There's still one more trailer we gotta talk about. And we really, really don't want to. Despicable Me 3. Three. Look, I liked the first one. Well, and the second one was alright. Minions was... eh. But this? Maybe it's just a bad trailer, but this just looks... God, it looks so friggin' obnoxious! And come on, really? Taking notes from one of the bad Adam Sandler movies? Again, it could just be an awful trailer, but... If the trailer's any indication of what we're getting, this movie's going to be just... Despicable. Damn it! Just, just damn it! Gee, Riley, if I didn't know better, I'd say you were mad about something. There's a rumor floating around that Goyer might end up directing some of the DC movies. Ew. Yep. Mostly the rumors are floating around Suicide Squad 2 and Green Lantern Corps. No! You keep him away from my Harley Quinn! Or he'll find a way to make Suicide Squad lame. Well, lamer. I heard that. We'll save that talk for another time. Look, I'm less worried about that movie and the Oscar it totally stole from Star Trek. Okay, that I'll agree with. And more worried about Green Lantern. Dude, Green Lantern as an idea, it's inherently silly. And Goyer has made it very clear by now that he hates silly. I'm half convinced he just hates superheroes, period, and only got into it because it's what all the cool kids were doing. Wouldn't surprise me. I just hope this doesn't come true. Goyer does enough damage writing these things, he doesn't need them to direct them, too. And now we have some news from the Marvel side of the pond. Kinda. You don't sound excited. Why are you not excited? So the Venom movie is going forward. What? You love Venom! Seriously, why do you sound so... so mad? Because we still don't have all the details on if this is going to be a part of the MCU, or if Sony's just doing its own thing. And I think we all remember how things went the last time Sony was allowed to do its own thing with the Spidey franchise. And the time before that. Especially the time before that. Ick. Good point. We also don't know which Venom they're gonna use. Well, if it's still Eddie, then awesome. And it'd tie in pretty well with Eddie's comic book return. But... What? CBR seems to be thinking it's more likely they'll go with the Flash version, which wasn't bad, but it was no Eddie. What I'd love to see is an adaptation of Lethal Protector. Man, that was a cool comic. Though, uh, there's also the other question. How are they gonna pull it off? You can't just have a Venom movie without the symbiote showing up in a Spidey movie. That's like sacrilege, and it'd defeat the whole point. Yeah, that would be pretty weird. Yet, yeah, the movie is slated to come out next year. So unless Spidey gets the black suit and loses it all in the first Infinity War, this just seems like it's gonna be a disaster. And that's still assuming it's a spin-off of the MCU Spider-Man flicks. There are just too many questions and holes in this for me to get excited about it. I hope it all clears itself up. Now for something completely different. Cartoon Network has just greenlit a new series called OKKO! OK Let's Be Heroes! And that is? Well, lately Cartoon Network has been trying to branch into multi-platform experiences, right? Well, sure. They did it with the whole Mighty Magiswords thing, and no, that will never not sound extremely stupid. Uh, so? Well, this is their latest effort. 
OKKO OK is going to premiere in the summer, along with a video game to be released in the fall. Wait, with like one cohesive narrative? Because, like, that'd be kind of cool. And a clever way to get people to watch the show. Well, we don't know if the narrative's all going to be connected. But getting more people watching seems to be the idea, yeah. The show takes place in a world heavily inspired by video games anyway, so it makes a lot of sense. Any chance it'll be the American log? Yeah, no. There's only one log horizon. All others are pretenders. Including the ones that came before it, right? Like sword? Finish that sentence at your own peril, Riley. You've been warned. Finish what? I wasn't saying anything, honest. That's what I thought. There is one thing bothering me about this, though. Uh, what might that be? The intro. The music's fine. The animation, though, it just looks unfinished. It might legitimately not be done, but I'd hope this doesn't end up looking like something I'd make for a school assignment. We'll see. Damn it, see, this is the reason the longer episodes scare me. It gives her more room to do that. <laughs> uh, translation. Oh my gosh, Riley, Big Hero 6. More news on Big Hero 6. I'm so excited, Riley. More news on Big Hero 6. What is it, Rila? <laughs> Season 2, the animated series has been renewed for... Wait, what? Another one? The first season hasn't even premiered yet! I can get renewing DuckTales. It's been proven to work as a series already, but this too? <laughs> well, I guess sure, it'd be cool if the series explores the side characters more than the movie got to, but... Wait a minute, what the hell am I doing? Hold on. Better? Oh my gosh, I'm so excited! You know what? Close enough. It's words, at least. All right, talk. They've got the Kim Possible team on this, Riley. It's gonna be amazing! Fair point, I guess. And Disney has been up in their game lately with the cartoons. I think the competition from Adventure Time, Steven Universe, hell, even My Little Pony kind of snapped them out of it. And thank God. Wander over yonder, Star vs. the Forces of Evil, Gravity Falls, they've been on their A game lately. Well, let's hope it doesn't stop now. Blizzard, oh Blizzard, this is the kind of stuff that makes me not annoyed with you. Good job, keep it up. I take it they did a good thing? They added another path to Eichenwalda. That's the one with the castle? Yes, it used to be that the only real way to the first choke was through an obnoxiously defensible choke point with zero way around for anyone that couldn't fly or climb walls. And they finally added a second way in that'll make attacking less of a chore. For that first objective anyway, the last one's still a doozy. Well, at least they're listening to their players. Well, that was never really a doubt. Anyway, I should also mention that they're patching Lucio, too. They're shrinking his aura's radius, but making it stronger. Which I don't really have too much of an opinion on, since I pretty much never use him. But I did always think his healing ability just wasn't strong enough. If more than one person's shooting at you, his healing was not gonna save you the way that Mercy or Anna's could. And Zen could at least help you kill one of them while healing you. Lucio didn't have options like that. So this change could be a good thing for that. Here's hoping that change goes over well. Oh, and one more thing. Arisa's officially out on console. Looking forward to seeing what she can do myself. Should be fun. In other gaming news, Sega finally revealed the name of the new Sonic game. It's going to be called Sonic Forces, and they revealed some gameplay footage from it. Thank God there's not a hint of Sonic Boom in sight. Unfortunately, there's no hint of Sonic Adventure either. Rila, I think this is starting to border on being an obsession. Oh? So if I go back over all our past episodes, how many times do you think I'll catch you saying the word Overwatch? Uh, anyway, the footage looked pretty cool. Uh, nothing we haven't seen from other Sonic games before, but I like the atmosphere they're setting up. Honestly, the game makes it look like Eggman's successfully taken over the world in this. Oh wait, so does that mean we're doing this time travel thing again? As long as it's more like Sonic Generations and less like Sonic 06, it'll be fine. I just wonder what the gimmick is. Gimmick? You know, how almost every Sonic game since, like, Sonic Heroes had some kind of gimmick. Werehog, Knights, Color Powers, Being Lame, the list goes on. 
a good point. I didn't see anything that stood out in the footage, aside from having classic Sonic in it again. Eh, uh, we'll see, I guess. I just hope it's good. Seriously, right? Sonic can't afford to keep having crap games, Sega! And now it's Japan! Oh my god. We're just getting into anime. Believe me, I noticed. This episode. So, what's the news? The Godzilla anime film, which I could have sworn was going to be a series, but I guess I read something wrong, is coming to Netflix later this year. Neat. Yep, it looks like Godzilla's back in a big way. You did not just say that. Say what? Like hell I'm repeating it. You know what, you know what you did. You know why you were wrong, so I'm just gonna move on now. Hehe. <laughs> Tear it off like a band-aid, sis. The ordinal scale dubs screening in the US on April 22nd. I heard season three was confirmed too. Great. You really don't care about making enemies, do ya? Said the queen of unpopular opinions. Well, hey, I get to be the queen of that too. I'm moving up in the world. In other anime news, we've got a few premiere dates. First up, Recreators is set to premiere on April 18th. It's an original anime, so no manga was harmed in the making of this production. But I'd be hard pressed to tell you what it was about. The description is vague. I think it's about a world where characters come to life to declare their independence from those who created them and dictate their stories. If that's the case, it's actually pretty fascinating, but I could be completely wrong. So you're telling me it's that one episode of Spongebob, but set to anime and taken seriously? I... well... If I'm reading into it correctly, then... yeah, pretty much. Huh. Anyway... <laughs> and then there's this Book of Zero! The premiere date was revealed as April 10th! I watched the last promo video, I already love it! The animation looks amazing, and the voice acting sounds perfect! Gee, can you guess how she feels about it? Just, just give it a minute. She could be pretty tricky to figure out sometimes. And now it's time for North American releases. And comic solicitations. In anime, we've got Bento, K Missing Kings, Kokoro Connect, and Wolf Children. As for manga, there's Maria Holic, Seven Deadly Sins, and Twilight Princess. Oh, so that's finally out, huh? Yep. And look at that cover. What about it, Rila? Uh Oh, oh boy. Careful not to give yourself a heat stroke, Riley. <clears throat> ah, that's a, that's a good drawing of Link there. <clears throat> what? That's right, Demoness. Eventually I'll be able to resist you completely. Boo, I expected more swooning. Why wasn't there more swooning? You've had a crush on Link since we were kids. I do not have a, no, Riley, no. That's exactly what she wants. Don't give her the satisfaction. What are you muttering about? Nothing, nothing at all, sis. So in comics, we've got Amazing Spider-Man number 25, World of Wakanda number five, Sam Wilson number 20, Daredevil number 18, Deadpool the Duck's final issue, Great Lakes Avengers number six, Guardians of the Galaxy number 18, Mighty Thor number 17, Monsters Unleashed number five, Miss Marvel number 16, Hellcat number 16, Punisher number 10, Spider-Man number 14, Star-Lord number four, Totally Awesome Hulk number 17, US Avengers number 4, Uncanny Avengers number 21, Uncanny X-Men number 19, and Venom number 5. Just one more to go until Eddie's back. Man, I'm amped! And DC? The usual. All-Star Batman number 8, Aquaman, Batman, Green Arrow, Green Lanterns, and Superman number 19s, Batwoman number 1, Harley Quinn number 16, Justice League and Nightwing number 17s, Super Sons number 2, and Trinity number 7. Well... We did it! Somehow. Ugh, oh, I need a nap. And this is still light compared to what we're in for come this summer. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. In the meantime, thanks for watching, everyone! If you liked what you saw, give that like button a zap! Share with your friends and subscribe by hitting that left button! And check out a friend's channel by hitting that right button! This has been Bullet 2 Weekly. I'm Rila. I'm Riley, and as always, stay, stay tuned! tuned.